Hey guys, welcome back or welcome to my channel. If you're new here, today's video is long overdue. I'm going to be doing a reading wrap up for July and August. So honestly, like a whole summer reading wrap up. I only read 11 books during this time. I believe my reading over the summer was a little slumpy. I wasn't in the biggest reading mood. And then not only was my reading a little behind, like my videos were a little behind as well, but now I'm feeling back in both forms. I'm feeling back into my YouTube. I'm feeling back into the reading. So I'm excited to film this video Video and then continue filming videos as the cozy fall reading season approaches. I'm just really excited and feeling a rejuvenated love for both filming videos for this channel and reading itself. So I'm in a good mood, I'm in a good place with reading, and I think I'm just gonna get right into the books without further chit-chatting because it is time for me to finally talk about these books. I'm not gonna do any sort of recap of if these books were on my TBR, what genre they are, anything like that, honestly because my TBRs got kind of lost in the sauce with this summer with me not really falling them me not filming the videos so there really were no tbrs for these couple months and then also i just feel like these books were read so long ago some of them like two months ago that i don't know i just want to get into them share my quick thoughts share what i can hopefully remember about each book and then that is that um which brings me to my next point like i'm gonna try and give you guys as best of reviews as i can but some of these books I did read two months ago, especially this first one. So I don't know how in depth I'm gonna be able to go, but I will be able to give you guys my overall thoughts and I have come up with ratings for all of them and like whether I recommend the books, if you should read them, that kind of thing. So honestly, this might be even better. I find when the books are fresh in my mind, I just yap and yap and yap and yap and these videos are 30 minutes long. So maybe this one will be perfectly short and sweet. Okay, so the first book that I read and finished in July was Shark Heart. And I also remember finishing this book like 10 days into July and it being my first book. And that is when everything went downhill for my reading this summer. But whatever, who says I have to read so many books in a month? I do not. I feel like I've definitely learned that over the past couple of months as well. I think moving on, you'll see me reading less books. I might still have months where I read a lot, but I'm not gonna like force it. I feel like I got in a headspace where I was trying to read as many books as possible, but that kind of maybe took the fun out of it for me. Okay, I'm blabbing on. Back to the book. Shark Heart, A Love Story by Emily Hayback. I absolutely loved this book. I gave it a 4.5 star rating. It is a literary fiction book and the main story is about a man who turns into a great white shark. Now, when you hear that, it is very jarring and you're like, wow, this is gonna be a weird book. And it definitely was, but it was so unique, so interesting. And I really, really loved it. And it was so much more than just a man turning into a great white shark. So essentially this follows a newlywed couple, Ren and Lewis, Ren and Lewis. And Lewis gets diagnosed with pretty much turning into a great white shark. And in this world, it is completely normal. Like it's not some crazy thing like, oh my God, he's turning into a great white shark. It's kind of similar to how you would get a cancer diagnosis. Like it's just something that happens to people, these mutations where people can turn into different animals. So he's turning into a great white shark. The book pretty much follows him on that journey. It follows the love story between him and Ren. And then it also follows a lot about Ren's life and her mom's life and her mom growing up. So it's like a generational story about Ren and her family as well. And it was really, really good, really unique, really refreshing. I couldn't put this book down. I don't know what it was, but I just, like, I was really hooked. It gave me a good bingeable feeling. I finished it in a couple of days. It made me cry. It made me feel all the feels. Also, it's written in a very interesting way. It's kind of written like a play where they like set the stage and there's different acts and things like that. But it also is very choppily written, I would say. I'll try and find an example, but some of the pages and some of the chapters are literally like two sentences. So that made it very easy for me to read because my brain didn't have to like stay focused on a chapter for a long time. It was very easy to fly through this book, in my opinion. So this is an example of how it's like a play. Like this says part one and then this is listing the characters in the play. I actually read this for a book club book and my friend listened to it on audio and she really loved that experience because I think the like play came across even more when you were listening to it. So this is an example of the pages. You see how they are very short, very small paragraphs. But overall, I love this book. It is a 4.5 star from me, which is a pretty dang close to a five. There was just something missing for a five. I think the thing that was missing is I did think that there was gonna be like more of an easy to understand like overarching theme. And I couldn't really grasp what that was here. It was kind of like mismatched and I did love the story, but I wasn't really sure on what the like exact theme and point and message of the story was. But I had a really good time with this book. I thought it was really interesting. I thought it was really fun. I thought it was really deep, emotional. Like I said, I cried. And this is like one of my favorite fiction books I've read so far. And fiction is one of my favorite genres at the moment, so. I really love this and I would definitely recommend it. And I think that most people will like it more than they think they will when they go into it thinking that it's a book about a man turning into a great white shark. 
you know? Next, I read The Paradise Problem by Christina Lauren. This is a sort of fake dating, fake marriage, romance, rom-com, I would say. And I enjoyed this book as well. I would say it's a three star. I'm trying to make my ratings more concrete. I'm gonna try my very best from now on to rate my books either one, two, three, four, five like most of the time, except for a book that really feels like it needs a 0.5. But for a while I was doing like 0.25s, 0.5s, blah, 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 and getting really confused. I'm just gonna go very simply, like if I liked a book, but didn't love it, like it's a three. So that is how I feel about this book. It was a solid three. It was a decently good romance for me. I found that the pace was well, the story was good. It was an interesting plot. And I did feel the love between the two characters, which you always like to see. And this book follows Anna and Liam. Anna and Liam got married in college so that Anna could get subsidized housing or affordable housing, something like that in college. They need to be married. And then she got the housing. And then unbeknownst to Anna, Liam kept them married for like the five years following college because he he needed to be married in order to inherit his fortune from his dad and then his parents want to meet Anna and so he has to bring Anna on his family's vacation and he has to go and track her down and tell her that they've been actually married still for the past five years and then he brings her on vacation and you know what happens they fall in love from that forced dating marriage situation. I really did like the paradise setting. This was full of rich people. There was good drama with like that family fortune and who was gonna inherit it. I did enjoy this book, but a lot of times romance books like fall right in the middle for me of like enjoyment. And I would say that this kind of fell right there. It was a little above how I feel about most romance books, but it didn't knock my socks off. I'm not gonna remember it forever. But I would say that I did enjoy my time with it, probably because I love the fake marriage or fake dating trope. And yeah, overall, it was a good book, I would say. I do have a reading vlog where I read this book, so I think I'm forgetting my more detailed thoughts. And if you want more of them, you can check out that vlog where I share a lot of my thoughts. Next up, I read Still Beating, which was a book on my Kindle. This is what I would say a dark romance. I'm honestly forgetting their names, the names of the characters, and I don't have the book in front of me. I'm not gonna look it up. I'm not gonna get into the nitty gritty, and this book will definitely not be for a lot of people because it is very triggering and there are some crazy dark things that go on, but essentially it is a romance between people who get kidnapped and are sort of forced to do things together while they're kidnapped. And I actually really enjoyed it at first. I kind of like a dark romance, I'm not gonna lie. Like I love mafia romance books. I love things of that nature. So I really liked the premise of this book. I would say that if any of what I said sounds like any bit of triggering to you, do not read this book. It is kind of crazy, like I've said. And I don't think they deal with it like super well. Like they definitely romanticize what's going on but that is the point of a dark romance book, I believe. Um, I really liked it because I do sometimes like an intense love story like this, like they were trauma bonded and they went through this hard thing together and they become like so dependent on each other and really in love with each other. And sometimes I just love that. It's kind of like a guilty pleasure romance book type of theme for me. But as I read on in the book, it kind of got really drawn out and long and like the same things were happening over and over again. And by the end, I was like, okay, this is like a little ridiculous and silly. And it just like, the epic romance part of it kind of like faded for me and it just kind of got like, I don't know, I was like, okay, I'm ready for this book to be over. And also, again, the way they handled some of the things in the book were kind of crazy, but I did enjoy myself for the most part and I read it really quickly. It was very bingeable, especially in the beginning. So this is a four star for me and I would like, I don't know if I would recommend, I would just say that if you are interested in this book at all, tread a little carefully and maybe look into it before you decide to read it because I think there's some tough topics that it deals with. Next up, I read the book Sandwich by Katherine Newman. I really love this book, but I actually left it at home for my mom to read. This is another four star for me. It was a summer book, a summer fiction book, and I just, I really loved it. It was short, sweet. I thought it was the perfect summer read. And pretty much it follows this family who has vacationed in Sandwich, Massachusetts. I think it's on Cape Cod every year for their entire childhood. And this is following that family on that week vacation, except now the kids are adults. They are 20 or older. The parents are older. The grandparents are older and it follows them throughout this week on vacation. It is very nostalgic. I feel like if you are part of an adult family, which I am now, you will find this book to be very relatable and just like nostalgic and make you think of your own family and family fun. It makes me want to take my future family to a spot every year for a week long vacation because it just seems like in this book, this family made the most incredible memories and they were very like sweet and touching. And you also get the main perspective of the mom and you get a lot of like insight into her becoming a mother to adult children, like kind of, you know, her children growing up and moving on and then also her own marital struggles and her parents getting older and her 
struggles through miscarriages as she was a mom, like who she identifies as a mom, like all this stuff. So I think if you're a mom, you'll also really like this book. I don't know, I really liked it. It was definitely no plot, just vibes kind of book, but I thought the vibes were great. And if you enjoy just like a plain literary fiction, a little bit of a family drama, you would like this. Not that it's family drama, but you know, that type of book where it's not like super exciting plot. It's more just like living with these people. I think you would like this book. Also, it had great summer vibes. So if you're looking for one last summer book, definitely read this one. It made me so like nostalgic and happy for like summer in my childhood. Okay, and then next is probably my favorite book of all the books I read in July and August. And that is Play Along by Liz Tomford. The way I love this book is crazy. It is the most bingeable book I've read in so long. I literally could not put the book down. I stayed up till 3 a.m. reading it. It was so good. If you don't know, this is the fourth book, I believe, in the Windy City series. And the Windy City series is a sports romance series that follows all these different um, professional athletes in Chicago. There are baseball players, hockey players, basketball players. This is a baseball player. And it was sort of a not maybe a fake marriage, I would say. The main male character is a professional baseball player and then the female character was the athletic trainer or the sports doctor on the team. And he has had a crush on her for years. And one night in Vegas, they get like drunkenly married and they stay married. And then it kind of follows them falling in love inside of that marriage. And it is so good. I can't even describe to you, but the way that Liz Tomford writes romance books is my romance book perfection, like literally perfection. She writes the tension perfectly. She writes the cute scenes perfectly. She just builds the relationships up so well. They are so believable. I'm on the edge of my seat. I'm swooning over the man, like perfection absolute perfection. I have not read a romance book this good in so long. The only other five-star romance book that I've read this year was the third book in this series, and that was Caught Up. Like, she is my favorite. I absolutely love this book. Like it was so good. I read it in like 24 hours. And now I need you guys to tell me if you have read these books and you love them as much as I do, like what are other books that give you the same feeling? Because I am searching and I cannot find that feeling in any other books. And I need it because like, I can't even describe to you how perfect it is. It's just perfect. Five stars, everything everything. Next up, I actually reread a book that I read last year and loved. It's kind of like one of my comfort reads. This is The Rebound by Kendall Ryan, and this is actually another sports romance book. It also is an accidental pregnancy. I love this type of book, and in this story, we are following the main girl who gets pregnant, and then her boyfriend leaves her, and then she moves into her brother's apartment building to be closer to him so that he can help her out, and then she meets one of her brother's teammates on the professional hockey team who also lives in that apartment building and he helps her like move in he helps her with some pregnancy stuff he helps her with everything and they fall in love and it is so sweet and i just like i love this trope i think it's one of the cutest heartfelt tropes it gives me little giddy butterflies and this is also a novella it is so short but it's perfect my only complaint about this book is that i wish it was longer and i read this book twice now and both times i felt that way I don't know, if you love the pregnancy trope, you'll love this book. It is so good and it's very short, a novella, like I said. And I think I gave this a four star this time around. I'm pretty sure the first time it was a five star. So like, I don't know, five star, four star, 4.5, whatever. I love this book and I highly recommend. Next, I read another novella, I think. It is the first book in the Mind F series by S.T. Abbey, I think is the author. Um, if you could tell, I was reading short books because I was doing a 24 hour reading challenge and I like needed these like short books to like push me through. Um, at first, I really liked this book. I thought it was a really cool, interesting um, concept. If you don't know, this book follows a serial killer who starts like dating and falling in love with a detective or a FBI guy, FBI agent, who is like working on her case where she's killing people. And at first I was like, wow, this is a really cool concept. Also, this book is only like 100 pages, maybe 120 pages in the first book, but then it just got like so out there for me. I know that the concept is out there to begin with, but something very specific happened where I was like, this is just so unrealistic. And I know, I know what you're thinking. It's unrealistic to begin with, but pretty much he was like going to her for help with his investigation. Also, he didn't know that she was a serial killer, but she knew that he was the FBI agent. But anyway, he went to her for help with solving the crime and was giving her like all this information about the crime and like was just completely fine with her knowing information about crimes and like why people murder and like things like that. And I was like, why is he not a little suspicious that she knows what she's talking about? And that just like made me get annoyed. And I also found that they were falling in love too quickly. I don't know. It just like 
got me annoyed by the end and I was like, yeah, no, I am not reading the rest of the series. So it was not for me. I know a lot of people love this series, but no, I did not really enjoy it. So I gave that first book a two star. Okay, the next book I read was a really great thriller. It was the perfect length thriller, like the most perfect length thriller I've ever read. It was I think just about 300 pages, which I think is perfect because sometimes they go way too into the detail, like they, they drag it out for way too long. I finished this book and I was like, wow, that was absolutely perfect length, which I feel like is kind of hard to find in a book. I feel like they're often too long, too short, no, perfect length. And this was called The Good Lie by A.R. Tor. I have read one other book by her. I think it was... I don't know what it was, but I had read one other book by her and I really liked it. And I had seen some other people recommending her books. So I thought I would give another book a shot and I really enjoyed it. It was just like a classic good thriller. It was a very like mystery crime focused one, I would say. And the two characters that we are following are a psychotherapist, psychologist, I don't know, something like that. She was like a psychiatrist or psychologist, something of the sort. And her patients were people who have violent like tendencies or violent like dreams and thoughts and she kind of works with them to stop them from acting on these violent impulses or thoughts or whatever and then the other guy was a defense attorney or district attorney i think he was a defense attorney and they were kind of working together to solve this serial murder and one of the victims in the serial murder case was the defense attorney's son so that added an interesting layer and it was just like i said like the perfect length i was on the edge of my seat i wanted to know what happened she did a good job of making me interested in the story i don't think it was too slow i thought it was perfectly like fast paced all the good stuff that you look for in a thriller and I also really enjoyed kind of the criminal minds aspect of it where they very much went into like the psyche of serial killers and murderers and you know why these psychopaths do what they do so I really enjoyed it it was pretty much a very good thriller that did exactly what I needed it to do you know so it was a four star I believe the next book I read is actually a book that I listened to on audio and this is the silent patient I feel like this is one of the most popular thrillers around it is by Alex Michalides he is a popular thriller author as well except I feel like this wasn't thrilling necessarily it was very like I don't know, it just like, it didn't necessarily thrill me. I wasn't on the edge of my seat, but it's definitely, you know, mystery-esque, psycho-analyzing-esque. And this book is about a psychotherapist, I believe he is, who has made it his mission to pretty much make a silent patient speak again. And the silent patient was accused of murdering her husband. And then once she murdered her husband and was like, arrested for it and all of that, she did not say a single word and has been silent ever since. She is in a mental hospital and just has never spoken about what happened. So this psychotherapist makes it his mission to pretty much crack the case, get her to speak. So he starts to work at the hospital where she is held so that he can have access to her and pretty much, you know, figure out this very notorious crime, famous crime that has happened. Now I have a few thoughts about the book. I do think that it was rather slow and boring at times. I would say maybe in the middle half, it started to pick up where I was like, oh wow, this is actually getting a little bit interesting, a little bit, you know, spicy, not necessarily like spicy, sexy, just like things were happening spicy. And also I was getting a lot of little tidbits, like information from different characters and people. And I was starting to try and make you know, the bigger picture, trying to solve what happened in my brain. And that really got me hooked. And I was kind of racing to finish the book at the end. But then there was a twist and it was a good twist. I did not see the twist coming, except for when I think you're supposed to see it coming. Do you know how like, there's like a chapter before it's revealed, like maybe one to two chapters before it's revealed where you're like, oh, I figured it out. That's how I feel. And I don't know if like that means I figured it out or I just kind of knew when they wanted me to know, whatever. It was a very good twist. Did not see that coming for majority of the book, but I don't think the twist, like I think the twist still was unsatisfying in comparison to like all the little clues they were giving. Like all the clues they were giving added up to nothing because the twist just kind of came from nowhere in my opinion. I don't know. It was a good twist, but I still like finished the book feeling unsatisfied. And I also do not think that this book needs to be as popular as it is. Like it is a very popular book and I don't see why necessarily. Overall, it was like pretty boring most of the time. And then like there was a decently good twist. Mm, very good twist. I don't know. As you can see, I'm a little jumbled on my thoughts on this, but I'm going to give it a three star. I liked it, but I don't think it was anything amazing. And it did like kind of make me a little like frustrated and bored at some points. I feel like it was very dragged out and very like literary for a thriller, you know, like it wasn't crime, keep you on the edge of seats, solving a mystery. It was very in the weeds, lots of words that kind of vibe.
I don't know if that makes sense, but that's how I feel. So that was a three star. And I also think that if I read it, instead of listening to it, I would have been like so bored. Like, I don't know if I would have been able to get through it. Okay, now we are back to a book that I actually have in physical copy. So I read The Five Star Stranger. This is the first book I read in August. All the rest of those books I read in July, I believe. It could be like a little bit crossing over into August, but I only read two books in August. And this is the first one. This is Five Star Stranger by Kat Tang. This was my book of the month pick for August. And I'm just gonna get right to it. I gave it a two star. I did not really like it. It was not for me. I'm like so confused on what this book is about. I picked it because I thought the premise was very cool. Pretty much the Five Star Stranger is our main character and he is this like rental stranger. So people can hire him to do things like be a um, groomsman or be a fake boyfriend or like practice a conversation that they need to have with a family member on him or hire him to be a fake dad or hire him to be whatever. They can hire him to be whatever they want him to be, whatever they need him to be. So this book kind of follows his life and all his little jobs that he takes on. And then the other half of this book is following him with this like long time job that he has where he is the fake father to a young girl. And then he's also kind of like put himself into the family with the young girl and the single mom. And like half of the book is him like trying to become part of their family and like assert himself as his as her like actual father but also he wants to stay away from them but he wants to help them he loves her he doesn't love her i don't know what was going on half this book i was like are they trying to put him with that single mom i couldn't tell what they were trying to do i couldn't tell the direction of the book there was also other parts of this book that felt very jumbled things didn't feel cohesive and it was just weird like the way it was written is not for me and i think that's all i have to say <laughs> um i would not recommend this just definitely an interesting type of book it was short and it had a cool concept but besides that no it just it didn't do it for me i don't even know what else to say i don't want to like rag on it but i do talk a little bit more about this in a vlog in one of my day in the life vlogs that I posted like last week and the week before. So if you really want more of my thoughts, you can check that out. But yeah, I think my overall thought, like the overall word I have for this that I've said multiple times is just weird. It felt weird and it felt hard to get through. Like this book took me like two weeks to read and it's 215 pages. So not great, not great, but whatever, two stars, you know, you can't win them all. Okay, and then the last book I actually just finished on like September 1st, but I am putting it in the August reading wrap up because I wanna talk about it and I already finished it while I'm filming this video, so why not? I am very excited about this book. It is Throne of Glass by Sarah J Mass. Now, I did decide to start this series with Throne of Glass. I know you can start with Assassin's Blade, but I decided to go this route just because low-key I kind of forgot about that whole dilemma about where you start the series. And then I bought this book in person and I just started reading it. And then I realized, oh, maybe I want to start Assassin's Blade first. But no, after some research, I think I'm happy that I made this decision. I know some people say that they feel confused in this book if they didn't read Assassin's Blade. And I did not feel confused at all. I think that like I just, there were certain references that I know that I will understand eventually. And it just, it didn't feel like there was anything crazy missing. I think in a lot of fantasy books, you don't know everything at first. And that's just kind of how I felt. I didn't feel like I was missing a prequel at all. And I loved this. I gave it a 4.5 star rating. It's not a five star. I don't know why, but I really, really loved it. So much fun, so much adventure. Like it felt so good to be back in a book like this. I have been in a book slump, like I said, like my reading has been weird recently. And I had a feeling that like getting into a good series like this might be the way to solve that. And I really think it is. I love this book. I think I'm gonna like it better than Akatar. I kind of think that Akatar was slightly overhyped, which made me hesitant to start this series, but I'm so happy that I did. I love the vibes of it. I love Selena. Is it Selena or Selena? If anyone is watching at this point, please let me know if I'm saying it wrong. I feel like I say Selena. But pretty much it follows Selena Sardothian, who is an assassin, and she is a prisoner in the salt mines at the start of the book, or a slave in the salt mines, and she gets pretty much picked up from the prison to go compete in a competition to be the king's champion. And if she wins the competition, she will be free from 
the slavery and her like prison sentence after she is the king's champion and king's assassin for like four years. So this book is her competing in the competition, staying in the kingdom, meeting people in the kingdom, meeting the crown prince, meeting the, what did I see? Meeting the captain of the guard, other people at court. It is very like, um, kingdom politics and courting and that kind of vibe. Like if you love books and shows that follow like olden day, like kingdoms and kings and queens and politics and like courting and ball gowns and you know, that kind of vibe, like this is that with a little bit of fantasy. It's not super fantasy heavy in this book, which I didn't expect. She is a human at this point and she doesn't have any magic. I don't know where it's gonna go, but she is not Faye. I thought maybe she was Faye because Akatar is Faye. She is not, I feel like I don't know where it's gonna go. Like I feel like she's gonna get magic eventually. But yeah, I really liked the vibes. I thought that she was funny. There's like a bit of romance, friendship, love triangles going on. There was like humor. I feel like it was paced so good. Like a perfect balance of adventure and action, but also like conversation and getting to know people and getting to know the world. And I feel like the world was explained really well. Like I was not confused. I was not overwhelmed in like a high fantasy way. I'm just really excited to read this series. There's also something else that I wanted to, oh, it kind of gives Hunger Games with the competition vibe, which is really fun. And like, I cannot say a bad word about this. I had so much fun reading it and it's just fun to have fun reading again. You know what I mean? So stay tuned while I read the rest of this series over the next couple of months. I feel like it would be fun to do reading vlogs while I read this series. So let me know if you guys would be interested in that. I don't know if anyone would, but I think it would be fun to do that. So. Yeah, loved this book, 4.5 stars. I cannot wait to read the rest of the series. Okay, so those are all the books that I read in the months of July and August. Like I said, my reading has been a little bit out of whack for the past couple of months, but I feel like I'm getting back into it. And actually, now that I look back, like I did read a decent amount of books, Plus I started and stopped like probably 10 more books in this time period, but I didn't feel like those should be included because I didn't finish anything else besides these books. So that is my summer reading. I can't wait to head into some more fall cozy reading. I do think that's something I've learned this summer is that I much prefer to read cozy in bed on the couch in a blanket, in a sweatshirt than like on the beach sun tanning. I also think that during the summer I'd rather do other things than read. I don't know, like I feel like some people love beach reading. I think I like cozy winter reading. But those are the books I read and that is it for me for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more book content and I'll see you in the next one.